Hi there, I'm Egg Fur, and today I'm going to look at some pulse dividers, uh, sometimes called pulse counters, although technically that's slightly different. These are pulse dividers. And uh, what's one of those do? Okay, so let's dive straight in. Okay, so let's imagine a situation where you have a number of pulses coming into a circuit, like this, and after a certain number of those, you want to get an output pulse. And so you would pulse it maybe one, two, three, four, five times. On the fifth time, you'd get an output. And then it'd be another one, two, three, four, five. And on the fifth time, you get an output. Uh, so that's what we're going to look at today. And interestingly, this circuit we built here can be used as a pulse divider because if you just take one of the outputs, um, then the number of hoppers you have along one side here will be the um, number of times you power a circuit before you get an output pulse, okay? So if you just take off all of your outputs, you get a pulse divider here. If you take out one of your items, you get one which will do one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve 12 um, pulses before you get uh, an output. So that's one way of doing it, but we're going to look at some alternative ways. So the first one, which is not my design, um, but is pretty cool, pretty small, is this one. So you take a dropper, a, that points into a hopper, which points back into the dropper like this. And we need two comparators. And we put one reading the dropper, one reading the hopper, a couple of blocks in front of those, a torch on top of there, a dust just here, another torch on the side, dust here, and a target block just there. And this one, what happens is you put some items into here. So let's uh, put some dust in, say five. And if I then power the dropper, uh, I'm going to use my lever for that. I power the dropper. Every time I power it, an item will move across to here. That hopper is locked, so nothing will change. Move back. So I go one. Let's move an item. Two, three, four. So you've got four items in the hopper now. And then on the fifth item, this all switches around and the hopper empties again back into here. And this is really cool because it is pretty tiny. You can put a lot of items into here, but there's quite a long reset time because hoppers can be quite slow. They move two and a half items a second. So if you had a uh, the dropper full of items, it would take you forever to reset the system, which is um, not so good. Okay, but that's uh, that's one. I, I think it's really nice. Uh, the other one I'm going to show you is uh, similar in a way, I guess, but it has different limitations. Okay, so here I'm going to put two droppers pointing into each other like this. And what I want is a comparator reading this one, like so. I'm going to put a block in front of there, a block just here. I want a redstone dust on top of that, a torch here, and another block on top of that torch. And you'll see that burns out. Okay, so this is now off. And I'm going to put a block on top of this. Uh, dropper, which has got the um, the comparator reading it, and finally a torch. Just uh, technically, you could put it here, um, but that's maybe not so convenient. It's more compact technically because it fits inside the existing build, but um, maybe here would be more convenient. Okay, now take some items, and uh, I'll use my dust again. Two, three, four, five. You can only use up to eight items. Okay, maximum this will do is eight. And the reason for that is because a burnout torch will flash eight times. And that's what we're using to put the items back. So if you have more than eight items, this will not work. Uh, but anything less than that is fine. And I can then now power this dropper with the items in. One, two, three, four, and five. And what's happening here is as this empties, this dropper empties, the comparator goes off. That updates the uh, burnout torch and causes it to start flashing again. And of course, that then pushes all of the items back into the first dropper. So you can see them here. And it's faster to reset than, than this one, of course. 
uh, because it's going, um, it, it's, it's not having to wait for hop speed, but um, it still has this limitation of only eight items. So that's you know one thing, but it's quite interesting. The you know this this comparator is is affecting the torch without um, really you know powering it anyway. Even if I don't have this block, you'll see that this still works like so. Um, but of course we want that block there so we can get an output from this. So that's uh, that one. Okay, so it's pretty cool, but uh, they do have limitations. This one's got a, a very slow reset time. This one, you are limited to only eight items and it still has, you know, uh, a, a quite a long reset time, but um, they're pretty compact and you know cute. But what I'm gonna do now is gonna build another one. And this one is gonna be one white tileable. It's got almost instant reset. Um, and you can use as many items as you want until your dispenser gets full. Okay, so I want to build a little um, four wide platform like that. And I'm going to put a piston on here, piston on the other side, a redstone block in the middle like this. And I want to put a dropper facing this way and another one facing back into it like that. So they're facing into each other. Okay. Get an observer facing upwards next to the back of each piston. We're going to put comparators on those observers like this and like this. Solid block here, solid block here, solid block here. We can take out these temporary blocks for now. Another one under this observer. And I want a torch there and I want a torch there like this. Put a solid block. So you see actually this um, the redstone block has gone over to this side. I'm going to put a torch, uh, a solid block here, sorry, a lever here and a torch just there. Now, of course, I'm putting a lever, but, you know, if you're bringing your circuit in, this could easily be a, um, you know, a, a repeater coming into here. And I could have my um, circuit out this way somewhere. Now, uh, I can now put some items in here. Three, four, we'll start with five like this. Um, like that. So I've got five items in here, no items in the left hand one. And what happens when I flick my lever is that actually both of these get powered. This gets powered by the repeat power in the block. So it's moved nice and across. This one gets powered by the torch coming off and coming back on again. So it actually gets powered a little bit more slowly because it's on the, um, on the uh, falling edge of a circuit. So as this goes off, this comes back on and powers this dropper. Uh, but you'll see it hasn't done that because this redstone block is here and that always powers a dropper, so the dropper can't do anything else. So I keep going and there's only one item left. When that goes across, this um, comparator will go out and that will trigger this torch to go off, allow the block to move across. And now, because I've got five items in here, none in here, I can keep going straight away and it'll do that after five items. So uh, in terms of output, you can put an observer here if you want and take your output from there. Uh, it's maybe not the most convenient place for it, but that is um, probably the best way to do it for this particular build. Okay, so that's one white tileable. It's based on a design um, I saw in Java by a, uh, a, red, a redstone called Not Mad Matt. Uh, but this is actually smaller than the Java design. There's a few kind of tricks in Bedrock you can use to uh, make it a little bit smaller. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty cool. It's quite nice. The the outputs may be a little bit inconvenient, but otherwise this is really good because you can have as many items as you want in these droppers and um, it'll just work. That's it for today. Thank you very much.